with Chuck Schumer speaking with Rachel last night. And now U.S. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, Democrat of Rhode Island and member of the Judiciary Committee joins me. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good to be with you. Good to have you. Do you see any indications of a growing a caucus for witnesses? Not yet, not on the Republican side. I think that in some respects, the worse this gets for them, the more they want to get out of it and shut it off as quickly as they can. But they do have to face the electoral consequences of voting to not see witnesses whom you know have relevant testimony and who now you have a reasonably good idea will be important testimony. In fact, the president's tweets about Bolton's testimony confirm the relevancy of Bolton's testimony. And you've heard uh, lawyer Philbin over and over again talk about how cross-examination is the single greatest engine ever invented for the discovery of truth. All right, so let's bring Bolton in and you can cross-examine him and let's discover the truth. Hmm. Yeah, you lay it out. Uh, and the president, as you say, increasing the relevance by suggesting there's a debate over his veracity. And if John Bolton is wrong yeah. or lying, Fine. You let's, put a witness let's veracity into question, that means that's relevant, and let's come in and subject it to that greatest engine ever invented for the discovery of truth. Makes sense to me. Uh, we were just discussing before you joined us about uh, the efficacy of the president's lawyer's arguments yesterday on the Senate floor. <laughs> you were, well, was, go ahead. It was, uh, <clears throat> well, let's just say that having Ken Starr, the obsessed Javert of impeachments, uh, as your witness on um, the probity required of a presidential impeachment, it's a little bit like asking John Dillinger to come in and testify sanctimoniously about the importance of deposit safety at banks. I mean, it just makes your head spin to hear from the guy. And then, um, do you think it antagonized? Do you think it antagonized just on Star? Do you think it antagonized uh, some of the jurors on the Democratic side? Yeah, I think it just looked preposterous and kind of offensively tone deaf. Um, and then Dershowitz. Well, you came mentioned in Dershowitz. Let me get you on Dershowitz. Let me for, for viewers as well, because uh, I guarantee you, you have heard more of these arguments than viewers, because I believe you've heard all of them, <laughs> all hours every yeah. day. For your analysis, because oh, yeah. you brought him up, let me play a little Alan Dershowitz, and, you, and we'll hear from the senator on the other side. Quid pro quo alone is not a basis for abuse of power. It's part of the way foreign policy has been operated by presidents since the beginning of time. Nothing in the Bolton revelations, even if true, would rise to the level of an abuse of power or an impeachable offense. Senator. I mean, this is a guy who opened up by telling senators that we had to uh, find the president guilty to the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt, which every senator knows and the parliamentarian will confirm just isn't the standard. So he started off saying something that we all knew wasn't true. Then this whole riff about how it has to be a crime we also know is wrong or against the vast weight of authority. Then he pretended that there isn't actually a crime, the crime of solicitation of bribery alleged in the uh, impeachment article and that you should look at its caption. We have a caption. It's in the Constitution. It's called <laughs> Treason, Bribery, High Crimes, and Misdemeanors. And uh, I think this fits right in. He just wasn't very credible. And after his long riff on the importance of how you had to treat this as a crime, then saying you couldn't look at the president's state of mind in every criminal trial, which is an the defendant's state of <laughs> right, mind, which because is a required intent element is an of element law. of almost every criminal offense. So you could see five or six prosecutors' heads snap back in the uh, Democratic side as he said that, because it was it had veered long over the rumble strips of being preposterous. Preposterous rumble strips. Uh, it sounds like a Super Bowl snack. Uh, I guess. Jesus, I mean, really. We're, we're running over on time, but that's the last question to you is uh, the president's lawyers yesterday, and we're going to hear the closing today, seem to really want to land the idea that maybe abuse of power is not impeachable at all. That's false, but you could see the appeal of it. If it were true, none of these facts, bold and witnesses, wouldn't matter. When they say that to this Senate, as you mentioned, what the senators know, and these senators, maybe more so than other people who are busy living their lives, know that the last two impeachments of Clinton and Nixon began with articles of impeachment for abuse of power. What do you think is the utility of saying something that you, you and your colleagues know is false? I think um, they're trying to offer as many off-ramps 
as possible for Republican senators who want to get the hell out of the difficult position they're in between the truth and providing a fair trial and the immense pressure that McConnell and Trump are putting them under. And the more off-ramps they can build, however phony or rickety, the more likely somebody out there on the Republican side will use that off-ramp. So they've been building this rickety series of off-ramps that don't withstand scrutiny, but give a talking point to Republicans who want to get the heck off the Senate floor and close this down before it gets too bad. Uh, very striking, uh, very interesting. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate you joining us on a busy day. Good to be with you. Yes, sir.